Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Advanced Topics in Statistical Physics. This is Hel Tasaki. In this mini course, I like to discuss integrable and non-integrable quantum spin chains. Okay. So um, I'm going to discuss something called the spin one half XY quantum spin chain. I'm going to define this carefully, but, but anyway, this is the Hamiltonian. So here's the interaction and here's the magnetic field in the X direction. And I claim that if this magnetic field term is vanishing, and then this model is integrable in the sense that one can rather easily solve this model to get exact energy eigenstates and eigenvalues. Okay. And this is actually a classical work. Oh, of course, this is quantum system, but it's a classical in the sense that old work uh, done by Liebschutz Mattis back in 1961. And but when this magnetic field in the x direction is non-zero, then uh, I claim that this model is very likely to be non-integrable. In the more precisely, it is known that there exists no non-trivial local conserved quantities in this model. I will, of course, explain this carefully. And this fact strongly suggests that this model can never be solved. And actually, this is a this is a relatively new work, which goes back to uh, 2019 paper by Naoto Shiraishi. And this statement itself was proved by Yamaguchi Chiba Shiraishi in 2024. Okay, uh, so this is Elliot Leap, this is Naoto Shiraishi, and of course this is me. So as you see, Elliot belongs to the generation of my parents, and Naoto belongs to the generation of my children. So it is kind of amazing to talk about these two very interesting topics done by somebody as old as my parents and somebody as old as my children. Okay, so now I'm going to define the model carefully. So before going into spin chains, I'm going to discuss a single spin chain. Oh, no, no, single uh, spin with one half. So then, as you know, the basis states are this up spin and down spins. They can be represented as these two dimensional vectors. And then spin is described by Pauli operators x, y, z. Okay. And since any operator in, the, for, in this spin for single spin is a two by two matrix, matrices, so um, you can define any operator by using this identity matrix and the three Pauli operators. And these are again very, very standard uh, properties of the Pauli matrices, but I want to summarize it here, be, summarize them here, because I'm going to use them repeatedly during this mini course. So if you forget them, uh, please come back to this slide. So if you square them, it becomes one. And interestingly, if you exchange x, y, and y, x, you get this minus sign. And of course, it, you get i, z, and so on. Uh, so this part can be written like this. Uh, so this is the anti-commutator. Of course, I think, of course, you know that this is the commutator, a, b, minus b, a. And so if you change this minus into plus, you get this anti-commutator. So this means x, y plus y, x equals zero, but you know, this is written like this, okay? So these are anti-commutators, and of course, these are the standard commutation relations for the uh, quantum mechanical angular momenta, okay? So uh, that was a single spin, and then I consider quantum spin chain. Now, here is a chain, which I described like this one. It's just a set of integer from one to L, and L will become very, very large. And I have a bunch of spin. Okay. Uh, on, on each side, U of this lattice, I have a spin one half. And the basis states uh, for spin at site U is again denoted at like this, so up spin and down spin. And basis state of the whole system is simply the simple tensor product of all these basis states. So this represents a state in which uh, spin 1 is in state sigma 1, which is either plus y or minus, spin 2 is in the state plus minus. And so there are two to the L distinct states. And the whole Hilbert space is spanned by these basis states. And so th this is a uh, shorthand notation. This both phase sigma denotes the collection of these spin variables. It's called spin configuration. Okay, and uh, these are the copies of Pauli matrices at site U. So, I mean, if you have x hat U, and if it acts on this basis state, then this guy ignores everybody else and simply goes to the state, basis state, on this site and acts on here. I think this is clear. And so this is the Hamiltonian of this xy model. Now I have xu, xu plus one. This means uh, this guy acts 
this one acts here and this one acts only on here. Okay, the same thing for here and this is the same. Okay, so this, uh, so I, I sum over all U. So this means that site one and two interact and site two and three interact and so on. This is, so the model has nearest neighbor interaction. Okay. And when u equal l, then you get l plus one. And you, there's nothing like that, but I use for convenience periodic boundary conditions. Okay. Oh yes, and about the name. So this is called the x y model because there's interaction between x x and y y x component and y component. Uh, but sometimes this is called the x x model because uh, the coefficients of these interactions are the same. Okay. Uh, so we, we're going to study this model and I will show you how to solve this when h equals zero and I will show you how to prove that the model has no non-trivial conserved quantities if this term is present. But before going that, let me talk briefly about the background, okay? So in, the, in that model, I only had x, x, y, y that interaction, but probably you wonder why don't we have this ZZ interaction. Of course, it's much more real, realistic and normal that there's also interaction here, okay? And, and here, this is exchange interaction constant. I just set this to one. And so this is an isotropy parameter, okay? And um, this is a uh, magnetic moment, but then you're in HX, HY, HZ are magnetic field in XYZ direction. So in, in our case, I only had magnetic field in X direction. And this is some parameter which depends on the, on the on on material, so probably so. Let me argue that if you have a material in which lambda is very small, then the model becomes close to x x plus y y. This x x model, okay. And this is still one dimensional, but uh, of course I never imagined uh, composing one dimensional magnetic system. Actual magnetic system is of course three dimensional, but there are a class of models called quasi one dimensional models. So this is the Hamiltonian. So uh, now U is summed over, for example, uh, sites in the cubic lattice, three dimensional cubic lattice, and E1, E2, E3 are just unit vectors in X, Y, Z directions. So th this one is sort of chain. So this describes the interaction between the spin at X spin at u and its uh, its neighbor in one direction, okay? So this part is basically spin chain Hamiltonian. And this is the uh, interaction between between chains. So for example, this is just a two dimensional picture, but then spins interact not in, the, in this direction, but also in, in, in this direction. So this guy and this guy, they interact, they interact, they interact. But, uh, but in some material, uh, there is some anisotropy an an and this J prime may be different from J. And suppose that you have a material, and we actually do, uh, in which J prime is very, very small. And then if you neglect this, then uh, this is basically quantum spin chain Hamiltonian. So there are a bunch of quantum spin chains, okay? So in this case, we get a collection of independent quantum spin chains. So that is the reason that we study this kind of quantum spin chain and they force for special value of parameter, we get this theoretical model. Oh, of course, if you are theoretical or mathematical enough, you can just say that, okay, we are going to study this model. So here's the plan. So in part one, I discussed this exact solution due to leap schultz mattis And uh, I, decom I, um, I decompose this part one into two parts. And in part one A, I discussed something called the uh, creation annihilation operator formalism for free fermions. So actually this uh, is of interest uh, as an independent short lecture. And then by using the formulation that we discuss here, uh, I introduced the jordan wigner transformation and solve the model without magnetic field. And then in part two, uh, I discuss how to prove the absence of non-trivial local conserved quantities in the model with magnetic field. And th these two parts are basically independent. And I, I think that some of you are already familiar with this material, this part one, then you may skip this and just go to part two. Okay, so that's all for the introduction.